Module 3, Lesson 3, we're going to add fractions with unlike denominators. To get us started, we're first going to talk about adding fractions. So you see in this first question that we have 4 eighths plus 2 eighths. So we're working with eighths with both of them. It's like asking about 4 pens plus 2 pens. So we would t say there's 6 pens. So if we have 4 eighths and 2 eighths, we have 6 eighths. And we see that we don't change the denominator, we're just changing the numerator. When we have an answer like this in fifth grade, though, we do have to look and ask ourselves, can it be smaller? Can it be simplified? Can it be reduced? Can it be put in lowest terms? And in this case, I see yes. If I divide them both by 2, because I have to divide them by the same numerator and same denominator, same number, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and that would be my answer in lowest terms. So we do have to remember that what has to be the same in order to add two fractions, we have to have a denominator that is the same. If we continue on here, we're going to look at two, two more examples that have denominators the same. So it's 4 eighths plus 1 eighth. They're all eighths. So we know it's 5 eighths. We see that no number can be divided into both 5 and into 8, so that's in its lowest terms. And then over here, we're working with 6, the same denominator, so we just put the 6. And then 1 plus 4 is 5, and no number can be divided into both of those. We then move on. Now we're going to talk about numbers when they have different denominators. It would be like saying if I had 4 apples plus 1 orange. I can't ask how many apples or how many oranges. So I can't say 4 eighths plus 1 sixth and ask how many eighths or how many sixths because they're different denominators. But I can, if I was adding apples and oranges, ask about how many fruit I have. How much fruit is a different denominator but still talking about the same thing. So we want to find a way to make 8 and 6 have the same denominator, a common denominator. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to list multiples of 8. So I'm going to say 8. 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. And if I just go through, some of you can do this in your head, but you might need to write it out. Then I'm going to look at 6 now, and I'm going to take the 6, and I'm going to list the multiples for there. 6, 12. Multiples mean I'm skip counting for those that have forgotten. 18, 24, 30, 36. 42, 48. And when I look down my two lists, I notice that the smallest, the least common, the smallest one on both lists is 24. So I now have my 24 is my new denominator. So I'm going to rewrite my problem vertically. And now I'm going to take this new denominator that I just found and I'm going to write it next to each fraction because it will be my new denominator. I then I'm going to ask myself, what do I multiply times 8 to get to 24? And I know I multiply by 3. So I'm going to do the same to the top because whatever I do to the bottom, whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So 4 times 3 would be 12. I'm going to do this again down here. What did I do to the 6 to get to 24? I multiplied by 4, so I have to do the same thing on the top. I have to multiply by 4, and I get 4. And in this case, when I add this all together, I'm going to add the 12 and the 4, and I get 16 out of 24 because it's the same numerator. And when I look at this, I see that 8 can go into both numbers, and if I divide them both by 8, this is divi 16 divided by 8 and 24 divided by 8, and I have now simplified or reduced my answer. So we're going to do another one together. We'll do one-fifth and two-thirds. The first thing that you should always do is rewrite it vertically. So then I'm looking at my denominators. They're different. So I'm going to list my multiples until I find something that matches. stop there and see what I can do down here. 
Oh, look, 15, so I can stop because they have the same denominator now. I am going to go back over to here. I'm going to make both of these out of 15. I'm going to ask myself, 5 times what is 15? It's 5 times 3. So I have to do times 3 here, which gives me 3 on the line. 3 times what is 15? 3 times 5 is 15. So 2 times 5 would give me 10. And I now add the two of them together. 10 plus 3 is 13. And the 15 stays the same because we're all, it's like my unit, we're all working in 15. So I have 13 fifteenths. So now we're going to do a couple of these together. So we're going to start with 1 third plus 1 half. I'm going to rewrite it vertically. I'm going to write out some of the facts, the, not the facts, the multiples. So I have 3. I have 3, 6, 9, 12. I'm going to stop there for now. And when I have 2, I have 2, 4, 6, and I see 6 is here. So now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to make this out of 6. And I know over here I did times 2, so I have to do times 2. And what times 2 is 6? It's times 3. And 1 times 3 is 3. And I end up with 5 sixths. Next, I'm going to come over here and try 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. I'm going to skip count. And when I skip count my 3's and my 4's, I can do that over here. I notice the 12 right away, so I can stop right there and turn this into 12 and turn this into 12. And now I have to ask myself, what did I do to the 3 to get to 12? I multiplied by 4, so I need to multiply by 4, and I get 8. What did I do to the 4 to get to 12? I multiplied by 3, and I need to multiply by 3, and I get 3. And when I add the 2 together, 8 plus 3 is 11, and I'm still out of 12. That should be 12. Next, we have 2 fifths and 2 thirds. So we have 2 fifths and 2 thirds. And we know from before when we worked with 5 and 3 that it was 15. I don't even have to list my numbers because I remember that. It's not always multiplying the denominators together. So when I go through this, this was times 3. So this is times 3. This would be times 5 and this will be times 5, and I end up with 16 fifteenths. In this case, it's improper. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, so I have to divide 16 divided by 15. It goes in one time. There's one left over out of 15. So now we're over here. We're going to do 2 sevenths and 2 thirds. We're going to list out our multiples. So for 7, and now I'll list some for 3, I see that 21 is the magic number here, so I turn this into 21, and this into 21. And I know this is times 3, so I have to do times 3 up here. And I know this is times 7, so I have to do times 7 up here. And when I add 6 21sts and 14 21sts, I end up with 20 21sts. And that's how I add fractions with unlike denominators. And you'll see as you move forward that many times you can see what the multiple is that you need to use for your least common denominator, so you don't need to write them out. So in this case, we have one half and one third, and I know it's six. So I just have to ask myself, what did I do here? What did I, so I have to do that here. What did I do here? So I have to do that here, and I end up with five sixths. One third and one fifth. We just did this. Three and five, it's fifteen. 
3 times what is 15? It's 5. So 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15, so 1 times 3 is 3. I don't even have to write the multiplication out when I know what it is. And I get 8 fifteenths when I add the 5 and the 3 together. We have 1 fourth and 1 third. I know when I do my multiples, it's 12. So 4 times what is 12? It's times 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times what is 12? It's 4. 1 times 4 is 4. And I end up with 7 twelfths. And 1 third and 1 seventh we just had. So we know it was 21 times 7. And this one's times 3. And we end up with 10 twenty-firsts. Sometimes, though, back from the beginning, we have numbers that we're adding together, and it's not always 1 in the numerator. In this case, we still have 4 and 5. The common denominator is 20. So here I did 4 times 5, so I have to do times 5 here. And here I did times 4, so I have to do times 4 here. And I end up with 19 twentieths. The last one that we'll do together, when I do this, I know that 21 is my least common multiple or least common denominator. So this was times 7, and this was times 3, and we end up with 20 21sts. And that is how you add fractions with unlike denominators.